This is your bot. And this is the bot she told you not to worry about. And that's because you're not Google. Surprise! But stay with me for a second, because a lot of bot makers got inspired from AlphaStar, get into bot making and thinking, I'll just make my own. And then, bam! Then you see the price tag for them GPUs and you're like, nah, I'll just skip the machine learning and put together a simple bot. You add heat maps, combat simulators, a pinch of A star, and you submit your bots to ProBots and you get asked, is your bot hard coded or machine learned? To me, it seemed like an easy question, except top bot makers Team Eris gave me this answer. The above question sucks, and just because a bot is not using machine learning, doesn't make it hard coded. Rude, but a point worth exploring. If you're not using machine learning, does that mean your bot is hard coded? If your bot has some machine learned, is it a machine learning bot? Or is it something else? How do we define the bots we're making? I'm Drekken and I'm, I'm gonna lay the groundwork on how I see it. Hard coded or sometimes called scripted bot is like a catch all term that we use to describe our AIs that aren't alpha star. I mean, it's meant that the bot's behavior just is inflexible. It didn't change. 12 pool bot is coded as its name says to make 12 pool every game. If it loses, it won't suddenly start building swarm hosts. Well, actually it'll start making roaches, but the point is that the author told it to do that. And that response will be there until they change it. But recently a lot of bots are starting to change their behavior in response to what's changing in the game. This is ProBots caster Ender Sword, and he's seen years of bot competition. I asked him about this trend. So the reality is that hard coding is basically when you have coded in a variable or data directly into your code. So you fix the value of something or fix the reference to that thing at a fixed value or to very fixed options. So saying, if it's above this, then this, if it's below this, then this. It's very deterministic and it's very set. Machine learning is a more complex way to take it, but is not the only alternative to that. So in a machine learning thing, the outcome is not necessarily deterministic in the same way. It's harder to explain. It's taking into account a lot of factors, but there's things in the middle of that that are not hard coded nor machine learning. And you would often call them either soft coded or dynamically coded. And in that case, you're usually looking for the variable to be either input it by the user so it's something where you're asking the user of the program a question supply the variable that I then make a determination on in our case with probots it's taking variables and information from the game essentially from the game state and its opponent and then trying to make decisions so we've had much more of the genuine hard coded in the past where it's first two three minutes are literally just I do this exactly this and we really don't have as many bots doing that that sort of thing now. They're all on this like dynamic, soft-coded, more adaptive side of it. Okay, so not everything is scripted is hard-coded. Bots can be flexible in their decisions even though they can't be modified. Their behavior can change based on new data with complex responses and though it looks like machine learning, it's not necessarily. But what about machine learning bots? Where does the line go from there? The field of machine learning is a really large umbrella term, but after our broadcast, I got together with the authors of Tier, Gertian and Tier, to discuss just that. They've known each other since university and they brought their textbook. Yes, we had a voice call and talked about over a textbook. But not just any textbook. Artificial Intelligence, a Modern Approach, third edition. Because AlphaStar used deep learning, I thought it would make a good place to start to find a Litmus test. The book has 28 chapters, and now you can guess how many of these 28 chapters about artificial intelligence are about deep learning. One chapter about deep learning itself, and one about using deep learning for natural language processing. I think it's shifting as well, because if I look at the uh, content uh, for uh, chapters were also different, and like the term deep learning is not even mentioned, I think. I really wanted to think of like what's the best way to describe T-Bone, because T-Bone is like, I put him as hybrid because he's, he's coded, but with some sort of, you know, learning involved. I'm like, I'm not as far as types of AIs, I'm maybe not as learned in that, but like, what would that even fall in? Because 
because it's just used for basic decision. The way I see it is AI, the, the field of AI just comes up with a ton of different tools you can use. So it's, I see it not as falling into a single category, but just here's a, a ton of different things you can use. Just pick a few and make something with it. So it's more of a list of, do you include this this tool, this tool? Um, ah, okay, I see. So actually... That should be another tool, and I see deep learning as just another tool of many. Right. You can have like a basket of these different things yeah, in there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So deep learning, they, they keep trying to have deep learning solve the entire problem in a, in a <laughs> lot of cases, but that's more to, yeah, in part, that's the power, because if you can describe the problem for a neural network, then you can just have the deep learning algorithm figure out the correct way of solving problems entirely by itself. So I went into the book for further answers. From in the first chapter, it asks, what is AI? And essentially says, what are we trying to do here? There isn't one solid definition, but four categories that our definition could fall under. Thinking humanly, thinking rationally, acting humanly, acting rationally. And the one I liked fell under acting humanly. The art of creating machines that perform functions that require intelligence when performed by people. I actually really like that one. To me, this gets at the heart of what we're building with these bots. Systems that will act in ways that mimic human behavior. But it was the second chapter when I found this. The structure of an agent. And I'm using agents interchangeably here with like what we call bots. But in this section, we go down to where it says simple reflex agents. This is one of four definitions for how they categorize agents. So in this definition, it says the simplest kind of agent is the simple reflex agent. And these agents select actions based on the current precepts, ignoring the rest of the precepts history. They operate using condition action rules, if then rules that maps directly on the precepts to action. Essentially, it means it just follows our basic logic. This is probably the closest to what we called hard coded. This was like our hard coded bot. And we move to the next one. So then we have model based reflex agents. These agents maintain some internal state that depends on the precepts history and the model of the world. They use internal states along with the current precepts to select actions. This is essentially means that it has memory, that it remembers something. And so we can kind of see if a bot or the bots that we think of, that if they have memory. Then we go down to goal-based agents. These agents act to achieve specific goals. They not only keep track of the current state of the world, but they also consider that what actions will lead them closer to achieving those goals. So that means it will know what it wants to achieve, and then it will figure out how to best achieve that. Best example of this would be bots that have access to an influence map. And those bots will be able to know, I need to retreat. And what is the best way to retreat? All right. And then the last one, utility based agents. So these agents try to maximize their utility functions, which is measured of happiness or satisfaction based on the outcome. They not only aim to achieve goals, but they also optimize the overall satisfaction of the utility derived from reaching these goals. The only one that comes to mind like that is Alpha Star, and that's because it has the Alpha Star League, right? It's not just the goal, they try to do the most optimum way of achieving said goals, and it keeps sub goals. This is where Alpha Star would fall under if we use this method. It would be a utility based agent. I think that makes sense, right? I feel like that makes sense. Are we making sense here? Looking back, Team Eris was right. Asking if a bot is either hard coded or machine learning was a stupid question. And I didn't really know any better, but now it makes sense to separate the behavior from the learning. I'm not convinced though that all this is the end all be all, but it's a good starting point. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna to refer to anyone's bot as simple, but maybe using like basic or something along those lines to describe its range of capabilities. Then using the rest of it as like a framework to describe how much a bot can do. Let's take like a model bot being if it can keep memory of the game and then utilize it. Or goal base if it can engage with the game and environment in order to make decisions, like with something like an influence map. And then of course, utility bot, if it holds multiple goals and objectives, and then tries to optimize outcomes to win. Then if authors did use some learning, we could handle that separately. Now, I wanna point out that this isn't definitive. This is just a conversation 
and I already feel like the wrath in the comments, bro, this is so wrong, and that's okay. Let's talk about respectfully in the comments and tell me your thoughts on how we can categorize these bots. And if you want to hear the full conversation I had with all these lovely people, I'll put the link to our community in the description. And with my team, I wanna help you build a bot project that you can put in your portfolio and stand out and get more interviews. We do events like demo days where you can showcase what you're working on and get feedback. And all of that is in the description. Now, until next session, happy coding.